And now for our What in the World segment, a very special one. You've probably heard of Watson, the computer that went head-to-head -head with humans on Jeopardy. You know that robots are increasingly used in manufacturing around the country, around the world. But have you ever heard of a robot sketch comedian? Well, meet Data. Also joining us is Data's handler, Heather Knight, a doctoral researcher in robotics at Carnegie Mellon who studies the intersection of entertainment and robotics. So Data, take it away. Hello, everybody. Can you hear me? All right. <laughs> the volume is good. OK, thanks. Excited to be here. Let's get started. Gosh, I love saying that. It makes me feel like some kind of superhero. But actually, I am just a mediocre robotic comedian. Great to meet you, Farid. You ready for some action? I am. Show me a postcard. So what Data wants here is a, a postcard of one of three neighborhoods in New York uh, about which he has uh, some comedy sketches prepared. And I think of the three neighborhoods, Times Square, West Village, and Brooklyn, I'm going to choose Times Square and show him the card. Good choice. On my way over here, I passed through Times Square. Have you seen the Naked Cowboy? Ah, the Naked Cowboy. He plays the guitar in his underwear and a cowboy hat. Ah, the Naked Cowboy. You gotta do what you gotta do. Yup, just shaking his booty. Taurus love that guy. Alright, don't touch the squishy parts. In fact, I am such a devout Taurus that I have two video cameras installed on my face. Well, that's all I got. Did I do okay? Be honest. No, not really. But I was really trying. Yeah, oh, it's come on. It's help. not so bad. <laughs> Try again. Am I doing a good job? Yes. They love me. <laughs> they really, really love me. Now I can go home happy. <laughs> okay, so Heather, that was pretty amusing, but mostly just fascinating. Now, we should tell the audience that you wrote the Catch routine. Catch you later. <laughs> you wrote the routine for Data, but his reactions are sort of natural. He senses, and if there were an audience there, he would actually, he strained the sensors work so that he can sense the audience's reaction. Right, Explain yeah. how that works. So, um, like, robots can learn through lots of data, and so well, in some of my work I've been using each member of the audience as a kind of a data point for machine learning. So in the reactions of a large group of people to a robot performer on stage, a robot could potentially learn, hopefully learn, to be more charismatic and more effective communicator and also, uh, yeah, and also be able to shape a performance for an individual group of people. So there can be visual feedback, which is kind of conscious, or we could make an iPhone app where you're all giving feedback along the way. Like, I love that joke. You could rate things more like Netflix style. Or and, and, the, and the robot would, in effect, incorporate that information and tell exactly. more of the jokes that... Yeah. that you like and fewer of them. It's sort of like Pandora with the thumbs up or Absolutely. thumbs down. Absolutely. Or he could even try telling jokes with different set of gestures and see that joke is yeah. ten times as funny for an audience. Now all of this is sort of can be filed under artificial intelligence and earlier this year Watson, the IBM supercomputer, beat its human competitors in Jeopardy. So how sophisticated is the, are, we, are we getting here? Well, I, I think that those two projects are actually great um, tandem projects. Watson's great at searching databases, um, and, and one of the things that I'm trying to do with the audience is generate some of those databases, and also specifically generate them around social expression. Um, so a machine can know how to actually communicate effectively with us, and so we don't have to adapt to using a screen or using a keyboard. Um, they can learn how to work the way that we do. Now, there are people, of course, who worry about something called the singularity. That is the moment where robots will actually become smarter than, we, uh, than, than humans and we'll be able to learn and keep learning. Is that really going to happen? Do all parents feel that way about their children? <laughs> I, I, I just wonder sometimes. I, I do feel like the way that we raise technology and the, and the applications we use them for um, can, and the storytelling we think about in the creation of new technology will help us shape the direction that it's used. I, I, we're not on the cusp of the singularity at this very moment, but I do think that when, in, when you put people and robots together in teams, we can achieve much more than we, either of us can do alone. We're still very unique. Heather Knight? 
data. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Right